All right, what is going on you guys? This is Kevin, Full Metal Ginger, and yeah man, got another classic metal update to do for you today. Um, so recently I got a few LPs in that I was really desperate to talk about, and um, some of the, I mean, they're all pretty old albums, and I was kind of looking in here to see what I could put with it, and it was just like, you know what, we've piled up quite a few uh, classic albums over the years that I've just never had the opportunity to talk about. Um, so yeah, uh, that's kind of like where I, that's the only thing I could really fit into this video that would have it make sense. Not that it really matters, but that's just me being OCD about it. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, for me it's a little bit more fun to talk about some old stuff every now and then and break up the monotony and a lot of times it's a little bit more special to me just because it's old and I've got, you know, whatever experience with those albums. So we'll get back to the 2020 stuff and the uh, more obscure stuff next time, but today we're going to talk about some stuff that everyone knows and, uh, it's probably uh, really sick and tired of people uh, rambling about over and over again. Um, so I've recorded this album, or at least attempted to record this video. Uh, I can't tell you how many times at this point, and I'm a little bit frustrated, but hopefully uh, 110 times the charm, and we will knock it out. So let me get a swig of some bang, and we'll see if we can get this done today. So soundtrack today, listening to Impure. Satan's Eclipse, uh, one of my favorites from last year. I know a lot of people are pretty high on this one as well. Uh, I'd had the tape for the longest time, and I just went ahead and got the CD so I could listen to it in the car. And uh, it kind of reminded me, I don't know why I didn't mention this when I did the review last year, but uh, Fred Edsby from uh, Dismember did uh, some producing on here. I don't know why I didn't mention that before, so I'm taking the opportunity to do it now. Hell yeah. So, uh, we'll start with the LPs, and uh, like I was saying, there everything in here is old, these especially, and uh, some of my favorite albums of all time. I'd actually owned them on CD for years, and it was like, I'm such a fan of these bands that I'll get anything on any format from them. And uh, so, yeah, I, the records popped up, I was like, I'm buying them, motherfuckers. So we'll start uh, with a band that is one of my top three, at least, bands of all time. And I'm not just talking about death metal, I'm talking about bands of all time. Uh, phenomenal fucking debut from Autopsy, Severed Survival, uh, came out in 1989, uh, cavernous, horrible, disgusting, uh, death doom, more death metal really on this album, but a uh, great band out of California, I know everyone's familiar with that at this point, uh, but yeah man, from Charred Remains all the way through Stillborn, there's not a bad song on here, uh, Ridden with Disease, Pagan Savior, probably my favorites, but uh, Service for a Banquet Coffin, uh, Critical Madness, uh, Severed Survival, everything on here is fucking top notch. And uh, one of the things I absolutely loved about the early autopsy stuff was just the really lo-fi production in here, you know. Uh, sounds like it was recorded in a basement, which is perfect. That's death metal the way it should sound. Uh, everything it comes off sounding like a demo on here. But I mean, phenomenally done. I can't say enough good things about this. Uh, this is back when the band was still a three-piece. Uh, it was years, actually, after I'd owned the CD that I found out that uh, Steve DiGiorgio was on here doing session bass for him, uh, you know, from Satis. It was kind of like, how did I just, you know, at that time come across that and figure that out? So it was kind of a weird thing for me on that. So uh, this is just a 2009 reissue, uh, again, on Peaceville. Nothing really crazy special comes with it. It's just a... Uh, the record in the sleeve, uh, you've got a nice photo collage, which I always love looking through this uh, when I'm listening to these albums. Just seeing who I see on here might pop up. Uh, I've got lyrics on this side. And the one really, really cool thing they did with the record is uh, they actually did, uh, shit, they did uh, both label, or sorry, they did both covers for the labels. So you've got the original album artwork and the, uh, the Doctors. And I always thought that was cool, and I know a lot of people like this one way more. I actually probably prefer this one. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just the color scheme. There's just so much, you know, orange in here. Uh, orange is not really my color, personally, but that said, I uh, fucking love both covers, actually. Um, and that was another selling point for me for getting this album, uh, even though I already owned it, is uh, the CD version I have was the Doctor version, so I can say I own both albums now, or both album covers, and it just kind of, for me, completes the process, basically. So yeah, there's that. The next one I have is uh, an album that blows that one out of the water, in my opinion, and uh, is easily my 
top three again you know favorite death metal albums of all time period and uh, i can think of very few things that i would put it higher than this but we have mental funeral their follow-up album from 91 and uh holy god man again there's not a bad song on this one this is the one where the doom came in a little bit more um you know i mean they've always been known as kind of like a death doom band uh and people seem to put more emphasis on the doom part but for me it's just slower death metal it's slower gurglier more feral pretty much and um yeah, it's just always been a big selling point for me on this one was just how much heavier and dismal it was. Uh, but at first, I was really not that big of a fan of this album. I, I did like it, but it took me a long time to really love it. And uh, funny story, actually, I was uh, <coughs> leaving work one night, and it probably snowed maybe five, six inches that night. And in the South, man, we were not equipped to deal with that kind of shit. Uh, but I just happened to put this CD on on the way home, and it was a long drive home because of all the snow and uh this perfectly fit the atmosphere of you know the surrounding environment that i was trying to drive through uh the roads were slick as hell and uh it was really treacherous driving that night and um this just completely fit the mood especially when in the grip of winter came on it was like wow this is just everything i'm experiencing is what this album is kind of representing so uh from that point on uh fell in love with this album one of my favorites of all time um so yeah i mean <coughs> Twisted Mass of Burnt Decay, uh, Torn from the Womb, really eerie sound, Robbing the Grave, Hole in the Head, uh, Bone Saw, Dark Funeral, I mean, or Dark Crusade, I mean, it just goes on and on. Um, yeah, I don't even know what else to say about this one. Uh, so this one is a 2010 reissue. Uh, just comes on uh, Gatefold, which is really nice. Got another photo collage there and lyrics. Uh, the record itself is just on. Uh, black vinyl and there's nothing really too crazy about it um, but yeah man uh, I don't even know what I'll even to say about this I know the band at first and I, it's probably on my CD version because um, they talk about I'm pretty sure there's liner notes in that but they were talking about really hating this album artwork at first and I can sort of understand where they're coming from because the color scheme is really pretty hideous uh, but then they were saying they, they kind of just grew to accept it and it really does kind of fit the music just this sludgy you know freaky you know, sloppy creature I mean this is kind of what comes across on the album and um, I, I mean for me you know maybe I'm a little biased because I love it so much but this is just one of my favorite covers of all time as well and for me also I, I thought the cover part was fucking crappy when I first saw it but yeah uh, an absolute all-time favorite for me uh i'm sure most of you would probably agree don't know if you hold it in high regard as i do but i fucking love this album and uh it's yeah i mean i almost want to frame this and hang it up just because i love it so much but there that is all right so last of the lps and this is another one i had on cd for a very long time and uh popped up on the lp and i was like or you know popped up for sale uh the record did and i was like yeah gotta have it this is the second full length from Baphomet, The Dead Shall Inherit. Or is it Baphomet? I, I never knew. Uh, I know I heard uh, Alex Webster talking about them, and he always called them Baphomet, so that's just kind of what I always uh, call them. Uh, but yeah, another Buffalo-based death metal band. Uh, yeah, another fucking brilliant album. Uh, I know they went as they changed their name shortly after this album came out and was a, uh, went as Banished for a long time. But I think since 2013, they've been back to Baphomet, and they've stuck with that ever since. Which, good on them, because that's a much better uh, band name, in my opinion. And uh, one of the amazing things about this one is I've always been really uh, attracted to uh, Dave's uh, guitar work on this one. His riffs are just so fucking well put together. And it was a lot like, uh, a lot like that for uh, plenty of early death metal bands. Is uh, The sound would be so brutal and so ferocious, but they still took the time to craft a, a really really good riff a really hook laden riffs stuff that was just easy to get into you could headbang along to it and um, I mean don't get me wrong I love really really ferocious noisy chaotic death metal uh, but what got me into music to begin with is just stuff with hooks a guitar riff I could really get behind and just kind of fall in love with and mem you know, remember it in my head and uh, so for me I mean those old death metal bands did it right not knocking anything new because I love all that stuff as well but you know this is just where my truly where my heart is uh, so the record just comes in uh, another sleeve like this got the band and uh, 
lyrics there, and uh, the record's just on black again. Labels aren't too fantastic anyway. Well, this side is. You got the some of the uh, album cover there. But yeah, man, if you are uh, at all familiar with, uh, you know, uh, Mortiscald or Sinister or stuff like that, uh, there is no reason you shouldn't be a fan of this band. These guys might have even been around a little bit longer. Uh, I don't really remember. I should have went back and looked it up, but it's whatever. But uh, phenomenal fucking album, and I think most people would agree on that. All right, uh, just CDs from here on. Um, let's see. I guess we'll start with this one. And to be fair, I haven't pulled these out and listened to them in a long time, except for this week. So it's been a while since I've kind of went through these. Probably should have taken another week to kind of really familiarize myself with them again. But it's whatever. So if I breeze right through them, that's the reason why. Uh, the first one we have is a... I think this is their third full length. Um, from Swedish band, Edge of Sanity. The Spectral Sorrows. And uh, one of Dan Swano's... 15 million projects, man. Uh, atmospheric and melodic, uh, but more in line with stuff like uh, early Opeth or Bloodbath, uh, which Dan was also <laughs> in that band as well. Um, it, it feels like they get it kind of lumped in with the whole Gothenburg scene, but for me, it's definitely more that you know it does have some melodic stuff, but it's a little bit more brutal than some of the Gothenburg stuff. So it's kind of really for me a blend of more Stockholm and Gothenburg. That's just kind of how I've always put it. Uh, but yeah, definitely more like early Opeth and Bloodbath like I was talking about before. Um, but yeah, I mean, just masterfully well written. Um, overall, brutal sound, but still very majestic at the same time. And uh, pulling this out and re-listening to this, I was kind of thinking, like when I was in high school, like uh, in the very early 2000s, that's about the time I was really getting into, you know, like early In Flames or The Haunted or At The Gates. And I really wish I had come across this album then because I'm pretty certain I would have really, really, really fell in love with it. And uh, it would have probably got me into, you know, some of the Swedish death metal for sure at a, a little bit younger age. Because I've been a late bloomer with everything and that's partly from living in the South and not knowing really where to start. But it would have been really cool to have this one at a younger age, but it's whatever. Uh, but yeah, in terms of Edge of Sanity, one of my favorites from them, bar none, uh, first three or four really I fucking love so there's that uh, there's the CD too nothing really crazy to look at alright moving on let's go to Finland and uh, in terms of all the fin Finnish death metal bands this one is ugh, it's hard to say uh, maybe my favorite uh, maybe my favorite band I fuck I don't know I mean it's just the Finns are so good at just really disgusting cavernous death metal I mean you got pertinence Demolish, uh, Sentence, Demigod. Uh, so it's really kind of hard to say, you know, with those early bands, which one is the best. But I'm really leaning towards this one. Convulse, World Without God. Uh, goddamn, man. It's just the ultra loud, raunchy guitar is what I fucking love about this. The dirty bass sound also. Uh, Rami's vocals are exquisite. And there's just so much power and simplicity when it comes to this album. <coughs> there's nothing really extremely technical, but it's just raw barbaric old school death metal done the right way and uh you know like a lot of the stuff in here it's one of my favorites of all time um so this is a reissue uh, i guess on spark records ah fuck i meant to look up when it um uh, when this one came out but it also has a resuscitation of evilness on it from 1990 that was a nice surprise when i got this one in i remember uh really digging that part of it as well but yeah i mean i don't know uh where you guys stand on the Finnish death metal I mean, and in terms of who would be your favorite what would be some of your favorite albums but this one definitely for me is a really really high up there and uh, I'm one of those guys like I know Eli was talking about in his last videos uh, one of his last videos uh, about being more of a fan of the American and Finnish stuff and that's definitely kind of where I stand so not to knock the Swedish stuff which I fucking love but if I'm going to pick something from overseas it's going to be the Finnish bands alright let's go back to the US with some uh frenetic, chaotic fucking death thrash grind, I guess. Uh, band out of Chicago, you should know by now. Macabre. Sinister Slaughter. Um, goddamn. One of the progenitors of death metal, really, uh, at least in terms of lyrical content, if nothing else. Uh, but these guys have been around for fucking ever. Uh, their second full length, and this is just 42 minutes of 
serial killers and murderers, pretty much. And it's always been so hard for me to describe this band. I mean, you know, they just have such a weird way of writing music. Uh, you know, it sounds similar to a lot of other death metal, but it's just got a really wacky vibe and tone to it. And uh, I've heard people talk like old oh, Pungent Stench or Impetigo would be good examples, but even that doesn't really fit it for me personally. Uh, they're just, they're fucking out there, man. I think everyone could probably agree to that. Uh, just lyrics and stuff in here in the book, but for me, the best way I could explain it is um, what was Leatherface's family? Uh, the Sawyers, at least originally. It sounds like that whole family got together and started a band. I mean, that's what I've always liked in Macabre, too. So, uh, probably my favorite from them. Dahmer's really good as well, but uh, this one, really, really high on my list as well. So, all right, let's go to Austria. And uh, this one is one of those that never had to breathe for me. A lot of albums, it might take one or two listens for it fully hooks me. This is one that immediately is fucking amazing. Uh, this is uh, debut. Yeah, debut full length from Disastrous Murmur. Rhapsodies in Red. Uh, came out in 1992 on Osmos, I believe. Uh, yeah, this is the 2015 version, also on Osmos. Uh, so if I had to describe them for people who haven't heard Disastrous Murmur, uh, maybe something like Demolition Hammer, if they were a more straightforward death metal band instead of like the death thrash stuff. Uh, it's just basically where I get... You know, you got similar riffs. The guitar tone really is what makes me think of them. Uh, but also here's some riffs that sound like they were inspired by stuff like maybe early Deicide or Malevolent Creation. That's just me personally. I mean, I know they were putting out albums basically at the same time back then. Um, but they do sound pretty similar to me. Uh, it's kind of my take on it. Um, love that CD, by the way. Um, and to me, that's just kind of the best part about it. I mean, every riff is pure energy, just kicks you in the ass start to finish. Uh, the raw production is great. The drums and uh, bass sound really, really loud in the mix. I mean, it just kind of beats you over the head repeatedly, never lets up. Uh, and it's just one of those that just hooks you right away. There's no, uh, no breathing time that you need for this fucking album. So I'm pretty sure everyone would know that by now. At least I would hope so. So there's that. All right, this one is weird, and uh, it, it's just kind of like, I get why they did it, but it still seems kind of pointless. Hey, you guys can let me know in the comments what you think about it. Uh, but this is a, an old album, reissued back in 2008, or actually re-released, I guess, would be the more proper term. Uh, but this is Incubus, Beyond the Unknown, but the opprobrium version. So, yeah, this album originally came out back in 1990. Uh, the band changed the name when uh, the rock band Incubus got really popular and uh, so they just started re-releasing uh, re everything under the opprobrium name and I know they did um, uh, shit god damn it uh, Serpent Temptation god that they released that one a couple times uh, maybe more than this one now, I know I've seen this one out they did it as uh, Incubus and as opprobrium and I'm not just talking about the reissues either but uh, you know, it wasn't like they even, you know, re-recorded it or anything. They just put it out again. I mean, it's exactly the same album. But anyway, long story short, still really killer Louisiana death metal. Uh, you know, again, sort of reminiscent of Demolition Hammer or maybe Cancer. But these guys were around, uh, I think, way before both of those bands were. So maybe that's where those bands got their sound from. And this is kind of at the time, like in 1990, when... Uh, Thrash, I don't want to say was dying out, but it was kind of being taken over by death metal. So they were kind of, the lines were starting to blur at this particular time. Death metal hadn't been fully established, and Thrash hadn't fully died out, so to speak. And uh, stuff like this in Dark Angel, I mean, that's, that's kind of what you get at uh, from listening to this particular album. Uh, and that's always been kind of an interesting thing for me, where it's kind of, I mean, it's one of the best albums in terms of blending both of those sounds together, in my opinion. So, and I know everyone's a huge, huge Incubus fan, and uh, I'm no exception. Um, but yeah, this one is the um, uh, High Roller Records, and they're always putting out killer reissues. I uh, think this one is, uh, yeah, this is a pretty new one, actually. Slipcase version. And yeah, man. Uh, just kind of, I've always thought that was just kind of peculiar why they would do that. I mean, just 
I don't know, why not just put out new albums? But it's just whatever. And, you know, unless it was a case where you were trying to uh, get those albums out from under the Incubus name, that makes sense to me. But still, it's just kind of like they were already out there to begin with, so what did it really matter? But still, uh, really cool. Alright, last couple, and uh, I think this is the only one on here that was released after 1993. Uh, this is actually a 2002 album. <coughs> and in the early days of this band, goddamn, they were cranking out full lengths. Uh, I think they put out their first five in five years, uh, between 98 and 2002. Uh, so this is their fifth full length overall. This is The Crown, Crowned in Terror. Awesome Swedish death thrash band. Um, well, more death metal, but there are some thrash elements in there. And they've always reminded me of, uh, at least on the earlier stuff, like a more aggressive Haunted. Uh, like, you know, played a little faster and uh, certainly a little bit more technical stuff. Uh, but it's, you know, the Haunted is a little bit more focused on the hook. And these guys were all about speed and a lot of their stuff. So I fucking love the early Crown albums. And this is the only one to uh, have Tomas Lindbergh uh, from At The Gates on vocals. And it's kind of a shame, really, because I thought he really, really fit their style, man. Uh, just with their fast stuff and he was doing a lot more um, there's a lot more power in his vocals uh, on this album as opposed to some of the earlier at the gate stuff that's just kind of what I hear from it but for me I think this is uh, one of his best performances and when it comes to the crown uh, I mean all their first five albums for damn sure uh, but this one's up there for sure like with uh, in terms of all their best stuff but you can't go wrong with uh, the earlier material from this band uh, phenomenal shit so yeah just kind of wish Tomas had been on a, a few more albums for them. All right, last one. Uh, looks like we're finally going to get through this video. It only took me a thousand tries. We have a demo from a Mexican band. Uh, actually, Eric Bauer turned me on to these guys. You know, uh, I never heard of them before because I'm a poser and everything. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, this is the uh, very first release they ever put out. Uh, I'm going to try to pronounce this. Uh, this is uh, Transmetal. With uh, Velocidad Deshoe Metal. I would probably butcher the fuck out of that. But um, yeah, like I was saying, their first demo, and it's pretty much straight up thrash on this release. Uh, they would definitely be a little bit more of a death thrash band later on. Uh, but like what I was talking about um, with a, a program, kind of like death and thrash getting ready to merge together, but a lot more on the darker edge. Like you would have a, like a, with Possessed, very similar to that kind of stuff. And, uh, but this sounds fucking great. Uh, sounds like it was recorded in a garage. And, uh, like all demos should sound. Um, fuck. But, yeah, I mean, really primitive riffs. Uh, you know, lots of, like, those early 80s styles that be kind of became classic. Uh, speed metal type of riffs. Were really hyper, played really hyper fast. Um, and just the shred fest all throughout. Um, so... I want to say about half of these songs would end up on their debut, uh, Morito in La Cruz, I think is what it was. And uh, on that one, it sounds, the production really does a good job of, of making the stuff still sound raw, but it's just an extra level of heaviness to it. It's just cleaned up just a little bit, and it just makes everything sound that much more ferocious. So, uh, really, really recommend this band if you haven't checked them out, but I would probably say start with that, their debut full length, and then kind of come back to this one. It just, you know, for me that, you know, with this particular band, uh, it just kind of feels like that's kind of the best way to start it. Just to feel that raw power and then kind of go back to see the earlier days where it was just a little bit more unpolished. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. It's just I'm rambling on at this point. But yeah, uh, really, really phenomenal band. Uh, all kinds of material I still need to pick up from them, but killer, killer fucking album uh, or de uh, demo anyway. But yeah, definitely check this one out if you haven't yet. I'm sure this is probably the most underground one on the whole video here today. So, there you go. Alright, uh, you don't even know the frustration I put into getting this video recorded, but it's whatever. Hopefully next time will be better. Um, so I have uh, something that may turn into a series. I've got a lot of albums in here, that, uh, or a lot of bands really, that I have two or more albums I haven't shown yet. So it's going to be kind of like a double vision type of thing. So I'm going to try to knock some of those out. Uh, I definitely need to get back to doing the tape updates. I've got some stuff coming in today, I think. Uh, some new bands, uh, not new bands, but new albums from uh, the Cardiac Arrest, especially, that I'm really looking forward to talking about. Uh, but yeah, man, I hope you like this one in particular. We'll get to all that stuff next time. Uh, if you like this video, like it, of course. 
Uh, subscribe while you're at it. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys sitting through this and hanging with me and watching and all the support I've had. I will see you next time. I'm gone.